Hello everybody, today we're going to be working on this um, dynamic water ripple effect, which as you can see, updates seamlessly as we move any of these objects around. Um, we can even move the water plane around and it all just works fairly flawlessly. And you can use it for more than just like stylized water, you can also move it, use it for some crazy like um, sci-fi magic effects or something like that. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Alrighty, so what we're going to start off with is activating the Node Wrangler add-on because I use it quite extensively and I highly recommend you have it as well. All you have to do is go into Edit Preferences, type in Node Wrangler. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab ourselves a plane, scale it up a bit, apply that scale, and now for this effect to work we're going to have to add a little extra geometry. So we're just going to subdivide it, subdivide it a couple of times so it's fairly high resolution. Then we'll go ahead, add ourselves a sphere. Um, scale it down a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and subdivide that as well and we're gonna click on the little subdivide in the corner and just turn the smoothness up so it stays circular. All right and now for the first thing we're gonna have to do is hop into geometry nodes just a tiny bit. Um, you click shift F3 and shortcut right on over there. To click it a couple times. There we go. We'll click new. We'll call this ripples to stay organized and we're not gonna worry about the fact it's all caps. All right, and then we'll go ahead and add a um, mesh proximity. I'll just type in proximity, a geom geometry proximity node. Um, we're going to take our sphere. We're going to click Shift M. We're going to add new collection, and we'll call this uh, edges. Click OK, and then we're going to drag the edges collection into our geometry nodes. Click relative. And we'll drag this out and plug it right into one of the input sockets. Then over in the modifiers tab, we'll just make sure it's plugged in, which it is. Fantastic. All right, we'll click take the geometry into target. And then we're going to add a map range node. Plug the distance into the value. And like so. Oh, and then we're going to add a realize instances node between the collection info and the geometry proximity. Then we're going to flip the min to 1, the max to 0, and that will be important later to reverse the effect. Um, and then we're just going to take the 2 min, plug that in as an input. We're going to, that's it. We're done with our geometry nodes. So we're going to go from here over to the shader editor. Let's hop into Eevee so we can see what we're doing. We'll click on the plane, click new, and then Come on, there we go. For simplicity's sake, we'll just get rid of the uh, shader for now. And then we're going to click... Oh, wait, nope. I forgot one thing we need to do in the... So before we leave here, uh, I forgot one thing. We're going to go ahead and s go to group. We're going to click our result. We're going to change it from float to a color. And that's, that's it. That's all we need to do. In the modifier tab, we're going to click on the result. We're going to just name it color. Um, and then we're going to go back to the shader editor. In the shader editor, we're going to get a color attribute. We're going to call it color. Oh, I guess we have to clear it first. All right, we'll hop down to the little three triangle um, vertex group button. We'll click color attributes. We'll add a new one. Uh, color's fine. Make sure it's black as the default color. And now we will select it in our Thing. And now if we go to surface, we'll see it's created this nice gradient going from the sphere away from it. And if we go to our modifier tab, and we can move this around and it will change the size and darkness of the sphere. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to click on our attribute, we're going to move it. We're going to create a value and we're going to type in hashtag frame. Now what this is going to do is it will um, just match the frame number of this file. So if we click space, we can see it cycling up through the frames as it goes higher, and it will just do that forever or until the composition ends. Then we're going to get a math node, and we're going to add these two values together. We're going to copy our add, switch it to divide, and this will just allow us to essentially slow this down. So if this goes to, if we divide it by two, when this gets to 80, this output will be at 40, and it'll just essentially make it climb slower. Um, we're going to type in like, 75, a nice big value to slow down a whole bunch. The next thing we're going to do, once my computer stops chugging from OBS, is we're going to add a noise texture. And we're going to plug this into the vector of it. 
And now if we click space, you can kind of see what the effect's doing, where we're gonna, it creates this radiating outward circle. And that on its own is pretty cool, and the possibilities are, are pretty enormous. But we're gonna go ahead and use it for water ripples today. To solve this sort of uh, blinking issue here, we're going to copy our add node again, set it to multiply, and then multiply it by the initial color attribute again. And that will just say, if it started black, keep it black. And that'll completely cut that off and keep it black. This is like super solid, and we want it to be a little bit more broken up and interesting shaped. So we're going to add a mix RGB. Don't know why it's showing up there. We're going to mix RGB. Um, and we're going to plug, let's give ourselves a little more room here again. We're going to plug our output of our add into one socket. And then we're going to click Control T on the noise texture, which will give us a mapping and a vert, uh, texture coordinate node. We'll switch it to the object input. And we'll plug that into the second spot on here. And we'll plug this not into scale, but into the vector. And this will give us more control over how distorted it is. So as you can see, if we go all the way to this end, it's just the circles again. And this end, it's just still. And we're just going to take it off the circles just a little bit. So it gets a little detail here while still being nice and circle-y. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a color ramp so we can actually control this. Uh, let's move this above here. Let's add a color ramp after the multiply. And now we can really pull this in a whole bunch, pinch in this side as well. And now you can really start to see kind of the, the effect we're going for here. Um, let's, and now we can also play around with this noise texture to really dial in this um, effect a little bit. So let's start off by taking the detail, the roughness, and the distortion all to zero. And just, that'll, that'll make it smoother and make it, I don't know, if you're doing like stylized water, I think that works a little better. If you're doing other effects, you can turn those up and just play around with it until you find what looks good. And now we've got kind of this, I think that that's pretty good. We'll do a size round 10 for now. Uh, let's turn this up a tiny or down a tiny bit more so it's a little more circle-y. All right, and now to actually like mix this with another material, what you'll do is you'll use this essentially this output here as a mask for whatever else you want to do. So what we'll do for this is we'll just add a mix RGB, that into the put that into the factor, um, change the top one to whatever we want our water color to be. So we'll do like a greenish blue, and then the bottom one we'll just make white, and that is that is literally it for the um, the rippling water. Um, you can obviously add more effects on top of this. Say if you wanted to do water waves or anything else, you could just plug that, build that out as complicated as you wanted to, and then plug it into this top socket here for the water color. Um, what we'll also do is add the principled um, BSDF back in. Um, so it's an actual shader, not just glowing. Um, I can see it kind of reflects the light. You can use this in roughness to make the um, ripples less rough and the water more rough. You can just plug that straight in to kind of show you what I mean. And now you can see the blue is like perfectly reflective and the white is perfectly rough, um, which kind of gives it like the look of bubbles, whatever. For what we're doing though, we'll just leave it as is because it's nice and simple and stylized. Um, for the other stuff I was showing, oh, before we get it, go on, let's go over how you add stuff to this sphere. How do you make like more stuff for it to reflect? And all you have to do for that is just add stuff to this edges collection. So we'll go ahead and grab ourselves um, another, we'll say a cube. It's in the collection, so it's fine. Uh, we can just multiply that out. Um, what we can even do is grab something like a, um, oops, grab something like a photo scan. Uh, we'll just pop into the asset library, grab literally anything, um, as long as it's in the collection. And you'll see even, even pretty complicated meshes are handled fine. Let's find something that's a little more, a little bit rockier like rocks per se um, and as you can see it, it kind of it still works with all the individual um, little bits and if you want these ripples to be bigger or smaller you can make them more or less based on this if you want the um, ripples themselves like each individual little ripple to be smaller what we can do is we can hop back into the um, shader editor I'm just using shift F3 and F1 to switch between stuff here the hotkey um, and we can either change the um, scale here, which will add some detail to it, 
um, we can, come on computer, you can do it. We can change this color ramp here to either clamp it in, clamp it out. You can also change the effect if you want it to be really sharp, like a very standard kind of cartoony effect. You can use the constant, which will give it this sort of sharper effect. And if you wanted to do more uh, larger ripples, what we can do is we can actually adjust the texture coordinate that the um, noise texture is plugged into. So we can hop down to the scale here and just, if we wanted to say have longer ripples, we can switch the scale to on X and Y to 0.5 and 0.5. And as you can see, they're even longer now. We could even go further. We can do 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, and now you'll see they're almost, they're almost complete circles. I don't want to go quite that crazy. Um, and you can use that in combination with the um, color ramp and the, uh, the um, to min to really dial in the effect you want. So let's say we want this, but a little bit larger. We don't want them to be quite so big, so we'll really clamp this down, but now they're too small there, so we can hop back over here and turn this up even more, um, which will make them like really long, thin ripples, which is like a completely different look from how you do it. And you can completely just customize that and tweak it to your heart's content or match whatever effect you're going for. Let's kind of tweak this back to a more middle of the road kind of effect. And now let's touch on how I made those those sort of more magic-y effects and how just uh, some other stuff ways you can use this. Um, so let's go ahead and in this material, instead of just plugging it into this uh, switch here, what we're going to do, we're just going to leave that as fine. It doesn't, shouldn't actually matter. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Uh, we'll take color into alpha. Then we'll click N to pull out the side panel. Go to options, switch it to alpha clip in both shadow and blend mode. And now you can see it's just these little little bits poking out. In fact, let's go ahead and turn this up some so we can see it more. And now we can turn the emission to our blue color or literally any other color you want. Let's go like purple because I think it'll be cool. Then we can turn the emission strength up and we get this sort of effect. And then you can add any other shape. Like you're not restricted to just doing planes. So we can get ourselves a UV sphere. We'll add it to, we'll just move it somewhere that'll be kind of cool, that'll be intersecting with a lot of this geometry here. We'll link the material to the plane, and you can see that hasn't done anything, and that's because we need to also link the um, modifiers. So we'll click Control L, copy modifiers, and it goes completely crazy, and that is because it is inside our edges collection. So we'll just pop that up into our normal collection, and as you can see, it's kind of working. Uh, if we apply scale, it'll go a little bit smaller. And now something else to note about this is it's reliant on the geometry in the sphere. So let's go ahead and into edit mode, select just the sphere, and we'll subdivide it, let's say twice. And now you can see this effect will follow the edges a lot nicer than it does when it's low poly. And we can even do like, you could even go crazy with the shapes. You could even do it on something like a Suzanne. We'll see how well this works. So we'll control L, copy the modifiers, copy the materials, and then we'll move it to the collection. Ooh, I only want this one selected. Scale it up. Apply scale. Let's also do some more stuff with our collision stuff. Make a new shape. We'll duplicate them around some. And as you can see, even with this, this crazy shape, it still should work mostly fine. That was probably too low poly as well. We'll go ahead and subdivide it a couple times. Um, you can get some really, really neat effects with this. Let's also cover how one way to kind of um, thicken the effect, as it were. I don't know the exact right term, but if you look at it from a steep angle, you'll see it kind of disappears. And one way that's pretty cool, you can kind of remedy this, is to go ahead and add an empty. We'll just do a plain axis on here. And then we'll add a array modifier. And we'll turn off relative and turn on object offset. And let's also make sure it's below the geometry nodes modifier because that will help it be more performant and won't change the effects at all. We'll turn it up to like, say 10, tab object, we'll select the empty that we just created, and then we'll grab this empty and we'll scale it down just a little bit. So that means each recursive iteration of this sphere is being scaled slightly smaller, and since all of them have the same effect, it stacks them all up and it kind of creates this um, thicker effect. Now it kind of falls apart if you look on it from directly, you can see the individual layers. Um, and that can partly be remedied by just adding more layers. 
and um, scaling this so it's just a little bit different. And it really kind of creates this cool thick effect um, that looks pretty neat and it makes it a lot more versatile where you don't, if you just pan past it, it doesn't look as 2D, which could be handy. You can also use that for any other material thing. It's just a cool trick to know. And I think that's pretty much it actually. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. Oh, real quick before I go, let's just cover why it's more performant to have the array below it. Um, it's simply because if you have it above, it then has to query all of that geometry in the geometry nodes tree, whereas if you just have it on the first one, it only needs to check on that one sphere, which means it's the number of vertices times this number if you have it above. Because if you have, say, five vertices and you have two layers, it's five times two. So you have 10 vertices you have to query. If you have nine times like a thousand vertices or whatever this is, you have to multiply those two numbers together and that's how many vertices it needs to check for the proximity node. Whereas if you just have it below, it only needs to check for the first shell and then it just copies that for all the ones below. Um, I hope that was clear. Anyway, um, I hope this was helpful and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.